Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and in this week's episode, we're going to take you for a three-day trip across the White Rim in Canyonlands National Park, so stay tuned. Most folks see the island in the Sky District of Canyonlands National Park from the paved road that travels along the canyon rim, which we shared in episode 98. Some others see it from the Colorado and Green Rivers on the canyon floor, as we did by kayak back in episode 95, which we'll link to on the screen right here. A few folks, however, will see Canyonlands from halfway in between on the White Rim. The White Rim Road is an 89.4 mile long, unpaved four-wheel drive route that traverses the top of the White Rim Sandstone Formation below the Island in the Sky Mesa. We originally filmed our three-day trip along the White Rim in November 2013, but we're only now sharing it with our Grand Adventurers for the first time. Because of that, some of these film clips aren't quite up to our usual standards, but the White Rim is just too special a place to not share. We chose to make the trip in a counterclockwise direction, beginning with the steep switchbacks of Mineral Bottom Road. This is another place where you won't be bringing your RV. Acceptable vehicles include four-wheel drive vehicles with low-range gearing, mountain bikes, and street-legal dirt bikes. Trips along the White Rim typically take two to three days, with overnight camping available by National Park Service permit only at specified sites along the route. Our friend John planned to mountain bike the entire route. Friends Mark and Karen were along to provide support. Our own plan was half and half, with me driving about half the time and mountain biking the other half as Patricia drove our Tacoma. Driving, however, turned out to be too much fun and I would never hop on the saddle the entire trip. Upon reaching the Green River, the White Rim Road forks left from the Mineral Bottom Road and heads southward along the riverbank, quickly crossing the boundary from BLM land into Canyonlands National Park. Not far into the National Park, we arrive at the three-mile round-trip hike to Fort Bottom Ruin that we visited on our Green River kayak trip. A marvel of ancient Anasazi architecture, plus a 19th century cabin, make the Fort Bottom hike a worthy diversion from the road.
White Rim Road was constructed in the 1950s by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission to provide access for individual prospectors intent on mining uranium deposits for use in nuclear weapons production during the Cold War. Large deposits have been found in similar areas within the region. However, the mines along the White Rim Road produced very little uranium, and all the mines were abandoned. Back when Canyonlands was being developed as a national park, paving the road was given consideration to turn it into a scenic drive. Thankfully, for trips such as ours, that plan was abandoned. While our elevation on the White Rim remains somewhat constant, the Green River carves a deeper channel through the sandstone as we continue to follow it downstream. Our first night's camp is at the Candlestick campsite, now high above the Green River and below its stunning namesake, Candlestick Formation above. Mark, Karen, and John are tent camping this trip, while Patricia and I will truck camp in the bed of our Tacoma. Day two takes us across Murphy Hogback, roughly the halfway point of the White Rim Road and one of the road's steepest climbs and descents.
the short 1.4 mile side road out to White Crack afford stunning views of Canyon Land's Needle District across the Colorado River. We pass below the Grand View Point Overlook up on the rim before setting up our second night's camp at the Gooseberry Campsite. Our third and final day on the White Rim will take us past Washerwoman Arch and the side trail to the Colorado River at Lathrop Canyon before returning to the rim via the precipitous switchbacks of the Schaefer Trail. Since September 2015, permits have been required for both day use and overnight trips on the White Rim, whether by motor vehicle or by bicycle. A maximum of 100 day use permits are issued per day, with 50 reserved for motorized vehicles and 50 for bicycles. A total of 25 permits of each type are available as advanced reservations, while the other 25 permits are available on the day of a trip. Each vehicle and bicycle in a group requires its own permit, including any stowed bicycles that are expected to be ridden at any point along the road. Group sizes are limited to three motor vehicles and 15 bicycles. All overnight stays require a backcountry permit and a $30 fee for the full stay, whereas there's no charge for day use permits. The demand for permits frequently exceeds the number available in spring and fall months, especially March, April, May, September, and October. A high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle with a low gear range is required by park regulation. And a breakdown requiring a tow can be expected to cost a minimum of $1,000. Pets are not permitted regardless of whether they could be kept inside a vehicle at all times. Campfires are not permitted either. So while the logistics behind a white rim trip may seem daunting, this is a 4x4 camping trip of a lifetime. 
It is worth every little bit of regulation that you need to go through to prepare for a trip. We highly recommend it. Now just a reminder, if you haven't yet seen our episode 136, our contest is still open to give away a high boost travel 4G 2.0 RV cell phone booster. It's a $450 value, so if you haven't yet watched that episode, click on the link right here on the screen that we're going to put up for you right now so you can go back and watch it and enter for your chance to win your own cell phone booster from Grand Adventure and from High Boost. And if you'd like to check out what we use on our own RV travels, click on the link down below in the video description to our Grand Adventure shop on Amazon. We do get a small commission from every one of your purchases, but every single thing that we list in that shop are things that we use ourselves, and we are happy enough with the quality that we can vouch for them for you to purchase for yourselves. If you like this video, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. Also down below, you'll find the comment section where we always love to hear from you after each episode. Now we air new outdoor adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer right now, go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the corner and ring that notification bell. And we would be honored if you shared Grand Adventure with your friends, family, and on social media. Until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a Grand Adventure. We'll see you then.